So we're continuing our tutorial on objects and classes in Java and with this tutorial we're going to introduce the, the concept of a constructor and specifically a constructor method. So to do that first of all let's take a look at the um, when we actually create the instance of each of these objects. So we have fraction here we have fraction f that's creating a new variable of type fraction and then we actually request space in memory by saying new this is a keyword in Java and then we refer to the fraction class itself so you can see it's spelled the same way capital F fraction and then we have an open bracket and a closed bracket here now normally when you see something like this it might remind you of and I'm just gonna put a little bit more space in here it might remind you of something like what's in this print line statement which is f dot size and then we have an open bracket close bracket that open bracket and close bracket seems to indicate that we are calling a method so what does the open bracket close bracket here mean well we actually are calling a method we're calling a very special type of method and it's called a constructor we don't normally call it a method we just call it a constructor now a constructor you can see there is no <clears throat> excuse me there is no constructor in the fraction class right now so that's the first thing we need to talk about which is whenever you create a new class by default Java creates a constructor for you and that constructor public it looks like this so even though this code was not written this is in essence what was being done so by default Java will construct a uh, default constructor for you that has the this form which is it's going to take all of the it's going to take all the numeric values and it's going to by default set them to zero and it's going to take all of the um, any string values and it's going to set them to null or the empty string so for example uh, I've got this, I, I put this in there, I'm going to take it out for the time being, just going to delete that for now. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go fraction h equals, well I don't want things to get too uh, bogged down, so you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take away my definitions for g. So the object g now, I've taken away the initializations for the object, so let's see what we get when we run this. And so when I run this, the first one I get is uh, 7 divided by 3 is has a uh, size of 2.33. Now I'm making references to G and normally that would cause us a problem. We would get a compiler error saying that this object or sorry that this this variable uh, has not been initialized or does not contain a value. But even though all I've done is create the variable I haven't actually set it equal to anything. And so there's where the constructor comes in. I have actually set it equal to something. I've set it equal to a new fraction. And by default, you can see that this new fraction has created the values 0 and 0. And then when I try to determine the, the magnitude or the absolute value, I get this NAN result. Because 0 divided by 0, that's a, in mathematics, we'd call that an indeterminate form. And in Java, when you try to do 0 divided by 0, you get not a number. That's what NAN stands for. So even though, even though there's nothing here that's making those, that's initializing those values for num and den, they are in fact being initialized. If I put this back, when you when you add your own constructor to the class, you're overriding the default constructor. Now in this case, I'm overriding the default constructor with the exact same thing. It's still putting in the values zero and zero. So if I compile that and if I go back and run the main method I should get the exact same results and I do I get not a number now that's something you that may be okay with you or you might not be entirely comfortable with that because well do we really want to start off with our our fraction being in a form that that doesn't make any sense so you might decide well I want to set my my default fraction to be something a little bit more sensible so I'm actually going to set my numerator to zero and my denominator to 1. And now if I compile that and run it, 
at least when I run this I end up with a sensible result. The fraction 0 over 1 has a size of 0. So in essence I'm still initializing things to 0 but I can't have a denominator of 0. And again if you think about mathematics and fractions and division dividing by 0 is generally a no-no so we'd like to avoid that right out of the gate. So there's one of the things we use our constructor to do which is we it allows us to set up the default object in a way that is useful to us. Now how do we know we're dealing with a constructor versus another type of method? Well there's a couple of things. First of all the constructor is the only method or method type construct that can use the name of the class. All other methods have to have a different name. The other thing is the constructor does not return us an explicit type. It doesn't have double or void or int or string. It just is public and then the name of the constructor. Uh, obviously it is actually returning something because we're creating this new fraction. So this, this pair, new plus the name of the constructor, is returning something. It's returning something of type fraction. But we don't have to explicitly say that when we create the constructor. Now there's some other interesting things you can do with constructors and I think the most interesting one is other than initializing values you can overload a constructor which means you can actually create multiple constructors and so long as those constructors can be distinguished from each other using the parameter list then you can have as many of these as you like. So what do I mean by distinguished from each other? Well if I did this If I did something like this, I'm going to get an error because there is no way to tell this constructor from this constructor when I make a call to the constructor. So I compile duplicate method fraction in type fraction. It doesn't like that at all. But if, for example, I were to add a parameter list here, so I'm going to have the parameters n and d, and now n and D. So this one now has a parameter list that has two fractions in it and what's going to happen is that the numerator of my fraction is going to be set to whatever was in this parameter list for N and the denominator of my fraction is whatever is set in the parameter list for D. So let's see if we can make use of this when we're testing our fraction. So fraction F is a new fraction and you can see I changed my code earlier. I took out all references or I took out all initialization of G. So I'm going to use my new overloaded constructor to actually set G when I initialize it. When I first, when I first create G, I'm going to take that opportunity to set G itself. And so you can see I've done that here. Fraction G is a new fraction and it's automatically going to get the numerator of 5 and denominator of 6. So that spares me having to put in these two extra lines of code to set the numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and compile both of those and run it. See what we get. And now we're back to a result that should be familiar. We saw this before. The first one, 7 thirds for the fraction F. That's because I explicitly set the values for numerator and denominator to 7 and 3. The other uh, fraction, which is G, 5 over 6, or 5 and 6 here, well, that's because I actually initialized it to have this value as part of the creation of the object. I used my overloaded, I used my overloaded constructor to put in those values. I could even, I can, I can go to greater depths if I want to. If, for example, I don't want to allow for a uh, denominator of zero, I can put in conditional statements, I can do all sorts of things within these constructors. And you might want to look at the associated lesson which goes in more depth as to some of the directions you can take a constructor. For now I just wanted to show you uh, the simple constructor. So remember the default constructor essentially is this. It sets all values equal to zero. We can do other interesting things by overriding the default constructor. So in this case, for example, we don't ever want to allow a denominator of zero. So we, by default, we set it equal to zero and one. But we can also provide an overloaded constructor, which allows the user to have some choice when they first create the object. This should allow them to streamline their code, make their code easier to read and more efficient overall. 
So that's where I'm going to end this discussion of constructors. Again, you should take a look at other uh, supplementary material on constructors and explore some of the other options you have when you're overloading constructors and with the different operations that you can perform within a constructor.